fucking awesome. Come on, it's gonna be fucking awesome. You know the words. It's gonna be fucking awesome. That's it, say. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Yeah. All right, all right. I did it. I did it. I didn't want to fucking do it, but I did it. Um, just like I guess a couple of weeks ago now or whatever. The director of the Justice League, Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, Zack Snyder, went on to the Joe Rogan experience and spoke at length about Batman and his movies and, um, oh my god. (laughs) I mean, I saw clips from this thing and I was livid. I mean, I've known and I've been making these fucking arguments against Zack Snyder and his interpretations of the DC Comics superheroes. And I've been trying to express to you guys why, even though they look pretty, um, you are not being given the Lord of the Rings version, the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings version of Batman and Superman. Not at all. Um, It's really unfortunate. The... That such powerful people can get into a position and talk so what is the word um talk as if they fucking know something when they don't fucking know anything it's just like it's driving me bananas some of the things that were said on this thing uh you know i'm calling this episode Zack snyder's kobayashi maru because he fucking brings up the kobayashi maru illustrating exactly why superheroes like Batman and Superman should not kill and why there is no no win situation for a true hero like Captain Kirk. And he's explaining the Kobayashi Maru to explain the stupidity that he's doing that just demonstrates he has no fucking clue what the Kobayashi Maru represents within Star Trek. So I'm going to fucking get into that in a second. We're going to talk about the fucking Kobayashi Maru. We're going to talk about a shitload of different things. I wrote a ton of notes from different bullshit that this man said. Um, and But first, before I fucking rip him a new asshole, I just want to say I love him as a director. I love 300. I love the director's cut of Watchmen. Um, I love uh, the the zombie movie that he made was the first one he made, uh, Dawn of the Dead. Um, I've even enjoyed things like Sucker Punch and um, and the movies that he's done for Netflix. They're great. You know, when this man is just being a creative person and going and doing his creative thing, he's he's a lot of fun. I mean, granted, the the freaking Star Wars movie that he made is essentially just generic sci fi movie. And to some degree, I mean, this is what I have to accuse him of creatively when it comes to his writing. He is a brilliant artist. He's an artist. He does storyboards for all of his movies, and it shows. He did storyboards for all of Watchmen and 300. And, I mean, he lovingly remade 300 and Watchmen shot for shot in lots of cases. And, I mean, these these things are great. He took the source material. He honored the source material. But then... He took the deconstructionist Watchmen and Dark Knight Returns approach and brought it to mainstream superheroes. And he doesn't understand why this is so tone deaf because he doesn't understand really what has been going on narratively in comics forever, which is a building of stories. Joe and and, and Zach talk about you know, Superman, there's just the name Superman. It's so simple and it's so this and whatever that basically because it's so simple, we have to complicate it and do all these other things. No, because it's so simple and so pure and because it is the idea that all of the other ideas are based upon, it always works best when you treat the original idea with honor, not when you try to make Superman Homelander. When you try to make Superman um, fucking uh, the Vil- 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 Voltramite, or the, you know, Invincible's dad. When you try to make Superman into one of these unstoppable killing machines or one of these other Superman types who do not have Superman's code of conduct. It's okay when these other people do it. They were created with that express purpose to be not Superman and see what that's like. 
But there are literally thousands of characters who are not Superman, who are not Batman, who are not Spider-Man, who are not Captain America, who are not the good guys. Many of them are very famous. The Punisher and Judge Dredd and Lobo, Deadpool, some of my favorite characters. They're great characters. And you can tell the kind of fucking stories that you want to tell with Superman and Batman with those characters, but not with Superman and Batman. And the tragedy of doing it with Superman and Batman is we have really yet to be given them at their fucking best so the audience is being robbed of the experience. Granted, the Christopher Reeves Superman was a wholesome Superman, but he was a boring Superman because he never freaking came up against anything interesting. He never had to bend his mind or use his powers in any really particularly interesting ways because he was just always up against dudes. Here's Lex Luthor. Here's a dude with similar powers to me. Here's Zod with similar powers to me. He just always fights the same thing. The fun thing about Superman is all the myriad of things that he can, can possibly come up against. Sometimes really interesting intellectual things. And how will Superman figure out how to use his powers or use his mind or whatever it is to overcome these no-win situations? Okay? Every situation that Superman is in is the Kobayashi Maru. Every situation that Batman is in is the Kobayashi Maru. Batman is just a fucking guy. Superman is refusing to go dark. Batman's willing to go dark up to a certain point. But he's working within a set of morals that he has. A few rules. The rules that we set ourselves, they, they make people. They make people mean something. The things that we put aside and we go, fuck that, I don't care about that. That doesn't enrich an audience's view of us. It's fucking insane. Shitty people who did not fucking appreciate the Western were brought into right Western characters and destroyed them. They made them not heroes. They made them drunks and bastards, and they destroyed the Western genre. And before you knew it, people didn't want to watch the superheroes with six shooters and cowboy hats. That's what they were. They were superheroes with guns. They were good guys. And then the depressed writers of Hollywood came in and destroyed the genre by making them all into the same fucking thing. Deconstruction is easy. You know what deconstruction is? It means I take something that you've already made and I tear it apart in some interesting way. Tearing apart things that other people have been made has been done in comics for years and years and years and years. And I trust me. You're not going to fucking do it better. Because it has been done so many times and people who have been paying attention have seen how many ways that it's been done so that they could go and do a version that was really fucking powerful and really interesting because they read Watchmen and they read The Dark Knight Returns and then they read a thousand other comics that did the exact same things but better. And I'm sorry, Scott, I mean, Zach, if you haven't fucking read those books to be seen all the ways in which it can be done and to really appreciate it. And I, I just do not think he is fucking deep enough to appreciate it. Zach is a jock. He's a jock and an artist. I know plenty of jock artists and they are like Zach. They're not that fucking deep is the problem. And I know lots of jock artists because I'm a jock writer. I was originally an artist as well. It's funny, Joe was talking on the on the show about um, wanting to be a comic book artist himself. He was into like eerie and creepy. He was into the horror comic books. And I wanted to be an artist myself. And Joe and I had a very similar experience. Uh, we had a very a, a bad art teacher. I actually moved and all of a sudden I had this new art teacher who like literally like beat the love and desire out of me in pursuing art. Um, whilst at the same time I had a computer, uh, two computer art teachers and a writing teacher who like just like uh, injected a love of writing and a love of digital art into me. So, you know, I, I shifted gears and I, I switched and Joe, you know, he switched to something else. But 
there are people who are artists and appreciate drawing anatomy and appreciate a physique and all these things. And I, I, I know what these people look like. They're usually in pretty good shape and they usually stay athletic. And part of the reason why they love art is because they love humanity. They love bodies and they love musculature and they love the sacred geometry of all that stuff that's there. And if you look at Zach's movies, dude, tell me this man doesn't fucking love the superficial part of superheroes. Yes, he does. He does not grasp the deep and moral aspects of these stories and why they're so fucking powerful, and he's missing it because the shit that works best for him from the place that he's coming from in the world is The Watchmen and The Dark Knight Returns. And he talks about The Dark Knight Returns in this friggin' interview, and his interpretations of some of the scenes are just fucking backwards like you would not believe he's talking about some no win situation some Kobayashi Maru where some bad guy's got the the the, the orphan he's got to kill the character Batman doesn't kill anybody in the fucking Dark Knight Returns there's literally a scene in that book where he breaks a freaking rifle over his over his knee and says this is the weapon of the enemy we don't use these we don't need it. We will not use it. And he snaps the fucking gun in half. You know, Joe Rogan said something to think of like, yeah, you know, Batman, it doesn't make any sense. Him not killing with all these crazy contraptions he's got and stuff. All these crazy contraptions he's got. He's got his pick, Joe, of crazy contraptions. You could shoot somebody in the head with a rubber bullet. There's so many non-lethal ways to take somebody out. And I've read enough fucking Batman comics to have experienced all of those ways. It's crazy. You know, famously, um, I, I had a story that I submitted to an artist who was right to reject it because... Well, this is a story. It was actually the, 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 the famous Ethan Van Sciver. Oh, my God. Ah. Uh, but I, I've known Ethan a long time. He was an elder statesman of the comic book com uh, comic book industry. Um, he was interested in working with me. And I was really excited. I had this Batman story that I really wanted to do. And it was a... Um it was it was sort of inspired by Denny O'Neill's Venom, which was a, uh, a, a... What do you call it? A historical Batman story, a legend. A, a story that was created, you know, like after the fact about the early days of Batman and a period of time where basically he started using steroids. And he, and it's a great story, started using steroids and he, because he had his first brush with losing someone. He was, he, you know, he, there was nothing that he could do about it. Somebody did die. And yet somebody does die and sometimes those things happen. And that is a more interesting story. Surviving the fucking guilt of losing because you couldn't fucking do the no-win situation and 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 staying the course, staying who you are, refusing to fucking change because of one bad outcome. That is powerful. That is super heroics. That is the type of story I want to see on the big screen, and I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one who's read a story like that, and it's fucking meant something to them. For him to turn to steroids in this story and then wean himself off, he locks himself in the freaking bat cave at the at the in a, in a room in the bat cave until he he gets off of the venom steroids, overcomes this tragedy. So I wanted to write something like that where Batman was learning. It was still in the early times, and I wanted to write something that was the definitive Firefly story because I thought Firefly was such an interesting Batman villain, and that if if the stakes of how dangerous fire was could really be like shown, it would be amazing. So. I had this uh, this story, uh, Batman and uh, Batman versus um, Firefly being controlled by Doctor Phosphorus from inside Arkham Asylum. It was really cool. It was a really cool story, but it it was this old school uh, you know story. This 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 story of Batman before he knew anything. And um, Ethan said, "No, I, you know I want to do something right now, today in modern continuity." And stupidly, I thought. Well, maybe I could still do my Firefly story in modern day continuity, and maybe just Batman's never really learned a lot about fire yet, and in this story he will. And Ethan read my pitch and went, what the fuck is this? 
Batman doesn't know how to fight fire? Batman doesn't know how fire works? This is ridiculous. Batman knows everything. He's fucking studied everything. The first time he came up against fire and he had any fucking problem, he would have went to a computer, figured out how to freaking fight fire, learned from firefighters, trained as a fireman, you know, like, and he would have been the greatest firefighter of all time, and now he's already got some shit built into his freaking bat suit at all times, just in case a fucking fire comes along because he knows what's going on. There's a fire. Here we go. I fixed it. And he's right. Ethan's right. He's 100% fucking right. Yes, that is Batman today. It, it, it did work. It, was, it would have been a really great story when Batman was learning because it was a, it was a rough lesson to learn. It was, it, was all, it was all pretty cool. You know, people being not killed but maimed by fire. Ooh, you know, it could have been powerful as an, a Batman learning to be Batman story, but not as a Batman like Batman today. Batman is meant to be the epitome of human achievement, the epitome of physical and mental achievement. He has the means and resources to go and learn anything that his heart desires. He can train in anything that his heart desires. And he has taken this feeling of loss that he has for his mom and dad being gunned down in Gotham City Street and desiring that that never happens to anybody else ever again. And he's taken that energy and he's put it into this war on crime. And part of that war on crime is no one will die. Nobody else is going to, ha not that. What happened to his family basically is they were killed. No one will be killed. I will be the knight who defends you. I'm the dark knight. I am a knight. What is a knight? A knight in shining armor. He's a knight. He's doing the right thing. This won't happen ever again. Not even to criminals. Because I'm that much of a good guy and I believe in good and I believe that people should be given the chance to live their lives I wish my mom and dad could live their lives with me here on earth and they can't I'm going to make sure that no one else's mom and dad ever dies I'm going to make sure that no child grows up sad like me Batman knows it's not just a guy. It's a mother, it's a father, it's a brother, it's a sister, it's a son. They're people. Life is important. Human life is important. It's valuable. God damn it, Zach. I, I can't believe that I have to sit here on my fucking podcast and fucking say out loud that life is important. And you're taking heroic representations of people who value life above everything else. And you're going, that's not important. That's not relatable. A Batman who won't kill is meaningless. Fuck you, Zach. I spit on the fucking world that you think you live in. <laughs> I live in a better world. And you're destroying my heroes. You're destroying my heroes with your sick, disgusting negativity. You're bringing your darkness into a place of light. And there is so much more that we can learn from the light than we could ever hope to learn from the fucking darkness. I propose that we are fucking playing in the darkness too damn much. We are dwelling in the darkness. We are perpetuating the darkness. We are reinforcing the darkness. We are reinforcing an idea that literally no one, not even a person who was scarred in the perfect way in their youth, can be scarred to be altruistic and purely good. Nope. Can't have that. We can't have a Superman from outer space who's been raised on idealism. Truth, justice, the American way, freedom of speech, freedom to, to, to freaking recuse yourself of, of freaking speaking against yourself, freedom to be innocent until you're proven guilty. That's why Superman doesn't fucking kill people. 
Because you are innocent until you're proven guilty. Even if Superman saw you do it. Because not everybody else saw, saw it happen. Superman saw it happen. Sure, maybe he could tell the authorities what happened. Maybe he will go and stand trial because that's the type of thing that Superman would do. These freaking heroes start going around killing people and then all of a sudden there is a moral obligation to stop them or get them under control. Which means either the stories should become all about the fucking police trying to get these motherfuckers because they are literally out there as judge, jury, and executioner killing motherfuckers. And it's funny because, you know, that seems reasonable. Yes. And in a Batman story, you could tell that story. Have a fucking character do something like that. And then have Batman come in and tell you why you can't do something like that. I had a great story that I wanted to tell for a long time. I don't know if I was going to use Lockup or if I was creating uh, my own uh, character. I think I was maybe going to use lockup for this story, but uh, it might, might, might have been. I, I never got very far with it, but it was just a basic concept that I thought was very interesting. Um, I wanted to have um, this, you know, basically this seeming crime of all these homeless um, junkies uh, disappearing from Gotham's streets. And then, and Batman's investigating it, and, you know, like there's all these things, the scary, you know, scenarios and people, you know, disappearing and being abducted and all this stuff. And then you start to find that they start reappearing and they're like, they're better. They have a job. They're off the drugs. Somebody took them off the street, forced them to overcome their drug habit and help get them back on their feet. But this person, he's, he's going against everybody's free will. Granted, Batman does that to some degree or another but these people they want out of their cells you know and when Batman gets there basically uh you know I think the whole scenario sort of ended with like um you know Batman kind of letting him off the hook but opening up the cell so anybody who wanted to leave could leave and um you know and maybe I forget what I had written in the pitch and like telling them you know I wouldn't recommend it you know, you should stay. <laughs> but, you know, many of them leaving and some of them staying. And, um, you know, the, this is the type of stories, morality. Is it okay to kidnap somebody to help them for the greater good? Batman is this wonderful metaphor or or what do you say um yet for different degrees of sort of violence and um when you put batman next to superman and when they are being held in highest regard superman is this dude who generally speaking isn't beating people to a pulp when superman has to beat up somebody it's generally somebody who's pretty powerful most of the time there's not even like blood or anything because like it's like one powerful guy against another powerful force and generally speaking superman ultimately tends to use his powers flying his freeze breath his laser eyes um whatever it might be to do things uh that would be visually interesting or whatever whether it is to capture them to stop them whatever um you know, that becomes the thing of Superman. It's not usually like Superman's like beating the crap out of people. But then Batman, he goes all the way down to he's beating the crap out of people. You know, it's interesting to me because, you know, in the in this in the Zack Snyder world, I mean, like just all they want to do is like he's permanently injured this person. This person's a paraplegic. He'll never he'll never walk again. This guy's been branded with a bat symbol and stuff. And it's all like, wow, that's cool. That's a cool alternate universe Batman that is psychotic and really dark and has no thought about rehabilitation. You know, Batman in the comic books has tried to rehabilitate various people at various times, tried to give them jobs at Wayne Enterprises. You know, it's a sweet thing. You know, you're the man who gives the freaking job to the homeless guy. Hey, show up at this address tomorrow and you've got a job. Batman does that with fucking criminals because Batman is a hero. At the end of the day, he believes in the future. He believes that the future can be better if people would do something about it. 
So you got Superman over here beating people up, but not necessarily like, you know, bringing them to the edge of, of, of it for no good reason. Whereas Batman is just a human and he's trying to sort of intimidate these other humans into thinking that there's this otherworldly thing that might come for them if they really don't change the error of their ways. The, the whole Batman concept is about scaring people straight. Like, he's literally trying to scare the criminals of Gotham into not being criminals anymore. And there are stories about that, various aspects of that, of that working. For, to one degree or another. Oh, shit, it's Batman. Like, he doesn't have to fucking brand the people for all time. It's, you know, it's the, it's the, it's the mystery and the atmosphere and the what happened to that guy. Well, he left town. You know, there are so many ways. It's a psychological warfare and it's so cool. And he goes right up to the edge of this. Now, meanwhile, he's got Dick Grayson, his, his ward, a acrobat who's the first Robin and Dick is brighter. But at the end of the day, Dick has to do the same thing. He's beating guys to a pulp and stuff, but he's a brighter, happier, go lucky, a little bit closer to Superman. So now he's somewhere in the middle between Superman and Batman. And then similarly, you got Tim Drake. Tim Drake's kind of a regular guy. He's a little bit of a brainy kind of guy. He's a detective. He figured out who Batman was, um, as d detected it out and basically forced him to take him on as a Robin because he believed that Batman got too dark without a Robin. And that's it. That's interesting. You know, Batman's really getting brutal and stuff, all this stuff. He branded a guy. He doesn't care about these things. You know, he's forgetting. He's forgetting about the light. He's forgetting about his own childhood. He's forgetting about how all this violence and whatnot ruins childhoods, ruins child's lives. And now here's a child to remind him. It's beautiful shit. When it's handled right, when it's written right, so so here we go. We've got degrees, like you know. Now Batman is just like a metaphor for degrees of violence. Okay, when we're looking at here, he doesn't cross that line. He won't kill people, but he's getting pretty. He gets pretty rough sometimes. And then you've got the Robins, and then you've got Superman, right? And Superman, along with like members of the JSA and whatnot, the guys who are the good guys, not killing people, doing the right thing, truth, justice, and the American way, all that shit. And then. On the other side of Batman, you've got the guys who are killing people, occasionally or otherwise, and now Batman is coming up against them, and the morality of what's the difference between me and you, and you're freaking intimidating people, but you're not, but he's not killing them, and that is the difference, and there's a huge difference. And every single time Batman comes up with once a, one of those guys, he gets lighter and he reaffirms the idea that he's not going to fucking kill anybody and that he wants the world to be a better place. And there's got to be a path to fucking victory here, you know, for all of these bad guys, you know, and, and that kind of stuff is, is, is the greatness, you know, lately it's that those kind of stories that really mean something to you and red hood means nothing. If Batman is killing who gives a shit about the Robin who kills people if Batman kills people too? So now the story's going to be about how Red Hood's doing something that Batman does, and Batman's like, I don't like the way you're doing it, and Red Hood's like, you do the same thing. And Batman's like, yeah, kind of, but a little bit different, and like, fuck you. That's the story? We can't have Azrael anymore taking over as Batman and killing motherfuckers, and Batman going, this ain't going to do. I need to come back. I need to stop this guy. This evil Batman is, is taking over. He's killing people. Batman doesn't want that. None of these stories get told. Do you know how many issues I read of these stories? You know how many issues there were of fucking Azrael fucking shit up as that new Batman doing it in that different way so that you could have the real Batman come back and go, uh-uh-uh, son, not like that, like this. Let me show you the era of your ways. There are so many fucking stories like this you know in marvel comics they have a fabulous um three-tier morality system that often uh will get utilized so great in so many stories i mean it, it's funny because it's one of these things where it writes itself and you know even bad writers it's always good when spider-man daredevil and the punisher team up because these three guys are could not be more different in the way they are handling their war on crime. Spider-Man, courtesy of his webs, is generally webbing people up as soon as he can, capturing them, come get the guy, I got you there, cops, here it is. 
Daredevil is operating more like Batman. Intimidation, I'm the devil of hell's kitchen, I'm scaring people, I won't kill people, but I will beat them to a bloody pulp. And and Daredevil does have a tendency to, you know, be, be the he's an emotional character who's dealing with heaven and hell and all these sorts of things. So sometimes he's the one who will brand the guy and he'll do all these things. And this is why Zack Snyder wants to fucking do all this stuff with Batman. He wants to make him more like Daredevil. But this is a problem. Batman and Daredevil are different. Just a little different, but different enough as to be distinct from one another. And when you have Daredevil being Daredevil, having Batman act like Daredevil is just a redundancy. Having Superman act like these other heroes who are a little bit more interesting if you're a piece of shit. And that's what that's what I'm saying. Piece of shit. I'm, I'm calling you all pieces of shit. Every one of you in Hollywood, if you think like this, change your fucking minds now. Because you are a piece of shit. If you look at a purely good character and you're like, that doesn't make any sense. What you are revealing is that within you, there is no good. There is no fucking goodness in you to make any space for fucking goodness as a possibility in other people. And everything you say about anybody else is coming from that lens. That lens of you being a piece of shit, unable to see that there are good people in the world. You know, I am a good person in this world who is constantly fucking hampered by shitty people in this world who always seem to think that, like, my intentions are anything but my pure fucking intentions. I love, I love things. I want to do things. I want to make things awesome. I got a really big personality. I got really big energy. And every one of these people who don't see a fucking scenario where Superman can exist thinks this guy is an egotist and he just wants to be the center of everything. I can't help but be the fucking center of everything. I have twice as much energy as your average person. So when I'm just relaxed and I'm just hanging out, I have a lot of energy. And if you're being offended by that shit and taking it automatically as it's something against you, you are the problem. You have poison in your heart. I don't have any poison in my heart. Anybody who's sat here and listened to my show for any period of time, you, you probably have a pretty good idea of what kind of person I am at this point. And I tell you, I come up against these pieces of shit all the time. People who can't fucking see that there could be something better. That there is goodness in other people. There's goodness in this world to appreciate. And they see Superman, they see Batman, they go, this doesn't make any sense to me. Fuck that. Fuck that bullshit. You know, and I'll apologize to Joe Rogan and the Joe Rogans of the world because I know Joe would probably say, well, that's not fair, man. I'm not a piece of shit. And uh, I think that uh, you know, it's a little weird that Batman doesn't kill. Joe, you sucked in too much of the shittiness of this world, man. We all have. We've all sucked in too much black ops and conspiracy theories that aren't fucking conspiracies. Stupidity, greed. Yes, the world sucks. Yes, it seems as though there is no one like Superman on planet Earth. But I try to be like Superman. And I know I'm not the only one. I know I am not the only one on planet Earth trying to be a fucking good guy. I know it. I know it. But so many of us good guys, we're shy and we're quiet. And we're hoping that all you other guys just stop. Stop being so shitty to each other. Start to believe. Start to believe that it could be better. Start to believe that it starts with you. That you could be better. If you believe that you could be better, then you could believe that other people could be better. It's characters like Superman that have helped me to believe that I could be better. Jesus Christ helps lots of people to believe that they could be better doesn't matter what you look to to believe in something better than yourself but we all need to and we need these characters in our lives we, we need these ideas to exist 
We need someone to run a five-minute mile so that we all know it's possible. And maybe it starts with a pretend, a story about a guy who wrote a five, ran, ran a five-minute mile. And somebody reads that and goes, maybe I'll be the first person who does. Maybe I'll be the first person who flies. Maybe I'll be the first person to reach peak physical human condition, to reach peak mental condition. Honestly, that's that's something I've been working on, being like Batman. You know, and I've been injured for a lot of years and I've been like slow on the, the physical side of, uh, of things. But I always have had that in the back of my mind. It's like, there's no reason why I can't be like Batman. Why I can't bring myself to the peak of whatever it is that I can be. And I have done that with my mind. For the things that I love, for the things that I appreciate, I never stop absorbing information. Just like Batman. In, as far as my my like my my influence, like the Batman influence in my life is like a I can know more, I can do more, I can learn an instrument, I can learn how to do this, I can learn pottery, I can learn this art style, I can learn anything. All it takes is dedication. All it takes is discipline. You know, people like Zach and people like Joe, they get that discipline on some levels. But they're broken on so many other levels that they can't fucking facilitate in their minds any space for somebody who somehow isn't broken in all the ways that they are, all the ways the people they know are. But we have to imagine that thing as real in order to create the space for it to exist. It's so important. You know, growing up, I didn't realize how small the group of people who I was sharing these comic book stories with were. But holy shit, there's, it's so small. When you talk about a comic book that has a 30,000 print run, which is where like most of the books would fall into when they would just sort of be like in your general run and like the main, and this is mainstream books, so mainstream books at Marvel and DC, and they'd fall into around 30,000 something, whatever. And you really start to break down those numbers of how many of those books are still at comic book stores, right? Divide them all into the comic shops and they all got a certain amount and they all probably have a certain amount left over. Unless it was really so great that it was selling out, which is pretty, th that would mean the, the, the sales were increasing. So like sales are always sort of like slowly declining over time, periodicals, and then they'll relaunch the books or whatever else. Or sometimes, very rarely, but like something like Walking Dead will build and build and build and build. But those are rare exceptions. So you got like 30,000 books and there's a certain amount of them that are just left over. So let's like cut 5,000 off of there. And then maybe there's um, speculators. Speculators are a huge part of the market. People who buy the books, wrap them up in plastics and backboards, and that's it. They just, they never come out of the thing. They buy them in speculation. People buy comic books as collectibles and don't read them. Or people buy comic books as artistic things, look through them. At the art, don't read them. I mean, at this point, I would say we're lucky if 15,000 of those 30,000 comics were read. So when you have something huge like Watchmen of the Dark Knight Returns, it means you know, a lot of people end up reading that, the, the, those books because they become outside of the, the, the comic book aud buying audience. They become sort of mainstream hits. Oh, did you, uh, did, did you know there was a big hit in the comics world? And then there's a certain number of people who go and check those things out. But there are so many classic runs and classic bits. I mean, like, you know, people who know why Deadpool is so great and can point to the writer who did all the hard work, which is Joe Kelly. You know, that's because we read 32 issues plus a couple specials and stuff and annuals or whatever of Joe Kelly's Deadpool, where he established the meaning of Deadpool's name and he established the character as this uh, good guy, somebody who really wanted to do good, but was just a fucking fuck up. And he just he kept sort of just the way he was raised and whatever it is, he just couldn't stop fucking up. But he really did want to try to get it right. And like that made him a Muppet. You know, he's easy, a man Muppet, a Muppet man. Um, and, um, you know, especially because he, he can have anything happen to him and he'll grow his limbs back and whatever else. So he's really like, you know, he, he's a punch and Judy Muppet. You can do anything. Bat, 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 and he's back. Right. And 
He wants to be a hero, but he keeps fucking it up. What's that? That's the Muppet formula. I want to be a comedian, but I'm not any fucking good at it. I want to be a, a uh, I want to run a, um, a variety show, but I'm a frog and I'm not any good at it. I want to be a glamorous superstar, but I'm a pig and I'm an asshole and I can't be any good at it. I want to, <laughs> I want to uh, do science, but I keep blowing up the lab. I want to make music, but Animal keeps destroying the drum set before the sh- song is over. You know, that's the Muppet formula. Joe Kelly brought that in. But most people don't know this because I, I, it's not some definitive thing. The original run of Joe Kelly's, you know, issues one through three. I mean, it's become big. You know, some people have read it. You know, people have gone back and looked at these things, but it's not known. That's why I have to fucking yell it all the time. As fucking Rob Liefeld's like so freaking proud of himself about having created the visual of this character who is literally just Spider-Man crossed with snake eyes. And I mean, it it is a good visual because he robbed from the fucking greats. And it's a name that he pulled off of a freaking Dirty Harry movie. It's like the the worst Dirty Harry movie. It's called The Deadpool. And then Joe Kelly made that name work. These stories about the morality of somebody who wants to be good, but he kills and he's and he's and he's really he's really bitter about certain things, whatever. Like this is the shit that makes the character. And the things they won't do. You know, Deadpool won't you know, bash in a bunch of kittens' heads. He won't kill a kid. He might not kill a girl. It depends. He he he's he has a heart. He's conflicted. This is character. It's not the visual. Zack Snyder is unfortunately all stuck on the visual. And I got to say, a lot of these filmmakers across the board are not just the the jocks. I mean, in general, if you've gone into film, it's because you love film and you respect film. You know, I, my brother Cody, I think, was sort of like surprised one day when I was explaining to him, like, because he was like making something about like film being a big deal, like kind of a little bit. And, and not, to, not that he was being a jerk or anything, but he was just sort of like, you know, like films like prestigious. And I just sort of went. That's hysterical to me, actually. Like, I get what you're saying. I was like, but that's literally the reason I chose comics. Because I fucking hate that part of film. The superficial part. It's all about the pretty people and blah, 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 Hollywood and the glitz and glass. I fucking hate that shit. You know, I like the idea of the dude strapped to his art board, creating something from his mind that nobody had ever seen before. People collaborating in the small scale to think up things that you hadn't seen and them being underappreciated for it. I'm the underdog, man. You know, I talked about it all on Monday's episode. By the way, it's my dad's birthday uh, Friday. I wish him a happy birthday on Twitter. I think he's at D Snyder. Um, he's... Um, 69 years old and uh it was my 15th episode of all your favorite bands suck and i did d snyder and twisted sister and all your favorite bands suck my music podcast is basically just a celebration of the underdog which i learned from loving twisted sister and loving my father and feeling as though he was not being appreciated the way he deserved to be and all of the music that i feature on all your favorite bands suck even if they're a band that is being um, appreciated in their genre I do not feel like that they're appreciated enough mainstream. They haven't been given enough mainstream acceptance. Uh, but there's a lot. There's a, 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 a gamut of bands that we run, all sorts of uh, genres and whatnot, and punk and metal and comedy, uh, a bunch of comedy that we, we've done so far. I'm um, doing Rancid, I think, next week. Um, anyway, I, I've been loving doing the show because it's so positive. It's just about all the things that I love about all this music stuff. And it actually brought a lot of positivity over to this show. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but I've been fucking pulling all sorts of wonderful things out of the woodwork to talk about whether it's Monty Python and Star Trek and the work of Jim Henson or individual things like um, uh, Reacher and uh, Brotherhood of the Wolf and Animal World. So happy to be sharing these things with you. I've got a tons more that I'm going to be sharing in the next uh, few um, few uh, weeks. Uh, I've got like a list of, of things like Resident Alien, great new show with Alan Tudyk and a great movie that came in a little while ago called Psycho Gorman, uh, which is great. Um Anyway, you know, I, I'm loving doing the positivity or whatever. But I was talking about that because it's, it's the underdog. You know, it's about D. It's about all these people who are not being appreciated the way um, I would like to see them appreciated. And for me, I believe that we've been living in a modern renaissance for years now. And nobody seems to appreciate it because the, the art is being done in toys. And it's being done in comic books. And they don't appreciate it that way. I mean, now it's being done in video games, too. There's all sorts of cool artistic expression going on in various video games. It's amazing, the world of of art 
that we are living in, what the, the, the amazing, beautiful things we are surrounded by all the time. And the fact that people don't appreciate it, it kills me. You know, and that's why I pick comics. I pick comics because it was underappreciated. And I didn't realize, though, how underappreciated in particular the art form of writing comics is. And it's really like, really kind of humbled me. I mean, it didn't change anything for me because you guys are out of your fucking minds, all you people who aren't reading comics. It is the single greatest art form on planet Earth when it is being executed well. It is just next level. Um, beautiful pictures and interpretations from somebody's mind and heart and soul um, with a mind for the medium and turning pages and building stories and, and, and you know no budget concerns. Just anything that you can think of can be made. Comics. Comics are the best. But what's that? 15,000 readers? Like on your average comic? And then what? Maybe, I don't know. We're saying like if a book is really popular or something like that, we're talking about 50,000 people are reading of like 100,000 books that are being sold or something like that. I don't know. I mean, based on a lot of the numbers, especially now, like now the stories aren't good, guys. The stories in comics have been very bad for a very long time. A lot of that DEI thing where just everything has to transform in the exact same way over and over and over again. And everybody's like, um, I recognize these patterns. Yes, I got the message. Women can do anything that men can do. We get it. Um, like, we get it. You don't have to beat everybody over the head with it. And what happens when you do that to an audience? They leave. So now the numbers are worse. Like that 30,000 like average for like, you know, some of these books that were like in the mid tier of things, you know, like where like the average of all the books would like kind of fall on. That's fallen even further. And I mean, books can like last with much, much less. Um, and the amount of people that are collecting to the amount that are reading, that ratio is way worse than it's ever been. So few people are reading the mainstream books. They're buying them for the collectible same collectible reasons that they've always bought them for. And this is part of the reason too, like is all these extra covers. They're playing to the market, the the speculator market. They're playing to a game of buy this because it might be worth money one day and not buy this because it's a quality product. Ooh, recipe for disaster, my friends. I mean, this is just like, oof. So the amount of people reading mainstream comics now, it is, it is small. Granted, People have switched into anime and other things like that. And fucking A, more power to them. My goddaughter, Juliet, uh, shout out to Juliet. Uh, she loves anime. She's you know, gobbles that shit up. Um, you know, I've been getting into a lot of like anime shows that I hear are good. Um, you know, occasionally like an anime like... Um, uh, Oh, sorry. I, and I, I'm, I'm saying it wrong, too. She reads manga. You know, it's the manga. And then the anime is the animated version of the manga. Right. Um, but some of my favorite flicks of the past few years I've found out were based on anime, like the Animal World movie that I recommended a little while ago, which is fucking amazing. Um, it's based on a a um, an anime. And pff, of course it is. because It's just so damn smart and good and so much thought's been put into it it's like when a fucking person who writes a book or writes a comic book would like we put so much more thought into this shit than you guys do and and i i think so much of it comes from a fucking place of like a repudiation of the shit writing that we see everywhere which is like man read a book motherfucker and like write something that informs me on some level that teaches me something that adds something to my experience beyond just kick punch me mad you conflict coming from fucking friends and family just constantly demonstrating how families can't get along and friends can't get along it's like yeah can't ever there be a situation where that's not the fucking case it's just it it it, 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 it kills me it kills me and, and and you know to finish you know what I was saying just about these jocks these jock artists and um, their love of the physical form and their you know just sort of obsession there they get into other things that go in line with this I and like I really like you know I know so many so many people who I've worked with who are these guys and they're 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 usually kind of handsome and um, they you know they're, they're well built you know they've 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 got a nice body 
and they're interested in athletics and they're interested in exercise and they're interested in nutrition and um, and then they're also interested in you know travel and they have a real appreciation for people who can do things and you know, beautiful things that have been made and stuff like that but they're not usually super deep sorry to say and uh, and Zach is demonstrating a lot of lack of depth and I mean I've talked a lot here, you know, just off the cuff. I mean, this was just me without any of my fucking notes, just just kind of talking. I, I thought I was going to go into my notes pretty quick, but as soon as I, I started opening my mouth, I was like, oh, no, I know what I want to say, <laughs> as is usually the case. But um, there's tons of things here that I noted down, and I'll read them. It'll, some of them will probably, like, go over some, some things that we already went over, but I'm sure there'll be some new stuff here. Um, so let's see, we talked about, they talked about the no win situation. Um, and the line, I believe you, Batman says, uh, I said, what is this insanity? There's a million ways to incapacitate someone that does not include killing them. Yes. This thing, this no win situation, the idea that the only way to incapacitate somebody is to kill them is your first fucking stupidity. The only way to stop this person from killing this person is to kill this person. I'm so glad you're not a police officer. I'm so fucking glad that you don't have that sort of responsibility. I'm so glad you're not Batman. Holy shit. Like, the Kobayashi Maru story is a story about Superman. It is taking the template of Superman, the man who knows that there is always a better way, and transposing it over Captain Kirk. It is giving Captain Kirk that same perfect superhero heroic lineage. I refuse to believe in a no-win situation. The whole idea of the Kobe Miyashi Maru story is saying that Kirk is going to be the type of captain who does not believe in no-win situations. And there is no such thing as a no-win situation, you fucking assholes. There is just the solution that you have yet to conceive of. I know it's hard to admit that you might not be able to conceive of the possibility that it works out the way in which everything would be fine. But I know anybody who's ever been hit with inspiration before knows that there is always an answer. It's possible. Just because you didn't find it yesterday doesn't mean you won't find it today. And when you find those answers, they're often so simple. Like, I don't know, shoot him in the hand. Shoot him with a rubber bullet. Any number of fucking things beyond shoot this man and kill him. And even that, even that, say you shoot him in the head and it makes his brain twitch and he shoots the person anyway. Like, like this no win scenario kind of thing. It's like, if I didn't murder that guy, nothing else would like. I think I've made my point. Um, You, Zach, you, you missed the point of the Kobayashi Maru. Kobayashi Maru is what heroes do. They refuse to give in to the no-win situation. And they say, well, if you're going to give me a no-win situ no situation, then I'm going to have to think just that much harder to figure out how to win it anyway. Which is what Captain Kirk does. Which is what Superman does. Which is what Batman would do in this no-win situation. Fucking ridiculous. The scenario that you are creating with the public is adversarial. Your judge, jury, and executioner. Yes, this thing of Batman and Superman killing people creates an adversarial relationship with the public. I understand that in Batman versus Superman, we see that story play out. And okay, it's just part of this story that we're telling. The foundations of all of these things are terrible. It's like, uh, it's like Zack can't have... A world where Superman learned what was right from the very beginning and never walked down that path. For Zack, the only way to walk that path is to kill somebody and learn from that. 
No, it doesn't have to be that. I've never killed anybody. I don't plan to. I don't want to. That's okay. I know that that's not good. I, right? I, I don't need. I don't. I don't need to kill someone to know that. Meh. Maybe I should do that. And I don't need to kill someone, make the whole fucking world fear me. To learn, oh yeah, you know, maybe me being the most powerful person on the earth and crushing skulls isn't a great way to go about business. <sighs> Literally, the whole freaking premise of The Dark Knight Returns, uh, not The Dark Knight Returns, The Dark Knight, you know, the Christopher Nolan movie, is at the end, Batman takes the hit for the murder. Even though he didn't do it. So you're sitting there going, Batman doesn't kill, I want Batman to kill. When the most powerful and stirring aspect of the Dark Knight was literally that Batman was being hunted as a murderer when he didn't do it. That was fucking interesting. So much more interesting than him killing people. You fucking idiot. Meanwhile, there are literally thousands of other characters who do kill. I said this before. And you're not happy until Batman is the Punisher and you have no idea the difference because you've never read a comic book in your life looking at it with respect. This guy's a clown. Because he's looking down at geek culture, he thinks he's too fucking good for it. I can't even. Zach is one of these people who, like many people, have basically felt themselves too mature for comic books since the onset. But when they see mature comic books, they go, oh, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. They just do not understand superhero comics. They don't understand a moral man standing up for what they believe in. And they're like, Ugh, my kingdom for something bloodier and gorier and whatever. They're also big horror fans and other things like that. That's great. There is room for you. There are plenty of stories like that. Let's tell them. There's so many fucking great comic books that have that essential premise that could be told and you're doing it with Superman but he's the only one who's been set up to tell the other story of the moral man who refuses to do the thing he's the only one nobody else has bothered to do that because Superman so clearly had established that domain that's Superman's domain very other very few other books or writers or artists bother to tell similar stories to that because Superman and the JSA and Batman and these good heroes at Marvel like Captain America and Spider-Man, they're already doing that. They're already doing that. Since they're already doing that, let's do something new. Let's do a killer Superman. Great. Now this is why you shouldn't make the original Superman into the killer Superman because now he's just copying the people who were deconstructing his story and they were deconstructing it to tell different stories but the stories of the non-deconstructed Superman are still there to be told and I mean if you think for a second that there's no more good Superman stories to be told or no more bat good Batman stories to be told you're out of your fucking mind You're out of your mind. There's a series of major pieces of what this Batman is and what this Superman is that we like. We like those things. Keep playing around with those things. Introducing new characters that will bring out new aspects of Batman, new aspects of Superman. Introducing new villains that will bring out new aspects of Batman, new aspects of Superman. Make them use your powers in new ways. Make them use their mind in new ways. It just it goes on for forever. Once you like the thing. I mean, it really is. It's like um, it's like a knock-knock joke. Just keep coming up with new knock-knock jokes. Keep coming up with new Batman stories. It's very possible. And I, I'm all for it when they're great. Um, his recanting of Dark Knight Returns is a scene in that famous comic where Batman breaks a rifle in half saying, this is the weapon of the enemy. We do not use it. Yeah, I, like, like I said. Uh, Kobe, I'm Kobe Miyashi Maru boy, did he miss the point of that one? Yeah, he missed the fucking point of what the Kobe Maru was. Literally proving Superman morality 
over Star Trek, demonstrating that Captain Kirk was going to go into every situation with not an idea that there was a no-win scenario, but with an idea that there was no fucking such thing. That's a hero. That's the type of hero I want to write or read about. Um, this is their religion. Okay. Yes, this is their religion. And you can do an homage to Batman and Superman and do whatever you want to do. I do an homage to Jesus. I do an homage to Muhammad. I do an homage to all of these literal religious figures in my King of Kings comic that you know is, is, is shipping to people right now. Um, the, the homage... The, hey, this isn't Jesus, but like I'm going to say something about how people are experiencing this. This isn't Muhammad, but I'm going to say something about how people are experiencing this based on their presence here. They're not them. You don't go, like, I, I don't petition the fucking, um, the, the, the Muslims to let me write a new book in the Quran. I'm not asking the fucking, uh, the Catholic Church to let me add a book to the New Testament. I'm playing in my own sandpit and I'm making something new and I'm having fun with it. And, you know, and people can criticize me or not criticize me or whatever it is, but it is its own thing away from the main thing. Batman is a religion. Lord of the Rings is a religion. It's not a religion in the way that you guys think of it, where there's like this... Um, useless dogma that's making people get into fights for no reason in public there is useful dogma that establishes the foundations of the world that Tolkien made and that is the world that we love that is the world we decided we appreciated and wanted to visit with more you must dogmatically honor those fundamental building blocks of any geek culture property in order to satisfy the audience. Deconstructing any of the pillars of that uh, construction is just, I mean, it's foolhardy because you're not going to make all the fucking billions of dollars you could have made if you simply just followed the fucking blueprint that was there in front of you. But it is sacrilegious in this case. It's a different sort of religion. And because of its nature, it does need to be respected, especially because it only exists as an idea. And if you don't respect the ideas at the foundation of it, they literally erode and crumble. You break it. You break the thing. I think right now they're in danger with Avatar of breaking the thing. They got three, the Avatar the Last Airbender, Avatar the first movie that sucked, Avatar the new show that sucked, and now they're going to try it again, I'm sure, at, at some point, because it's such a great property, and by that point in time, everybody's just going to be like, what is this? I think it happened with The Tick a little bit. I think The Tick would have been a bigger hit for Amazon, but they had already done a live-action Tick with Patrick Warburton, and that didn't exactly go over great, and then here it is again, we're going to try again, and it just seems like, oh, they're doing, they're doing that thing again. It's so, <laughs> it's very upsetting because this is my religion. What's the point of learning things so that you could participate in the storytelling and so that you could appreciate the depth of the great storytelling that is happening only for others to erode the shit from the top and all of their stupid ideas trickling down to the bottom and ruining our stuff. You know, the good news is the only thing to do is make new stuff <laughs> and give this shit a chance to like fucking die on the vine the way it is. But, ugh, hate it. All right. Um, I said they haven't gotten Batman right on the big screen yet. My mom famously told me the other day, I mean, a while ago, uh, she said, what'd she say? She said, I think Batman's the least interesting part of all of his movies. And I said, yes, that's because they've never gotten him correct. Batman is a single-minded war on crime. He's not a playboy. He pretends to be a playboy so that he can roll in the circles that he rolls in and get away with what he's getting away with, and nobody ever thinks that he is 
Batman. Bruce Wayne is a disguise that Batman wears. And these people who have been making these Batman movies, like they don't get it. Every single movie is about his love interest. Let me tell you, at least 90% of every Batman comic I've ever read has not included a single love interest for Batman in any way, shape, or form. Nothing. Batman is not about love. Superman is a little bit because Lois Lane's a big part of his story. Not Batman. You know, Catwoman's been stepped up and occasionally, you know, she'll play a little role and and, and that's kind of like the the height of his thing. And it's just kind of toyed with. But it's always this thing of like Batman has too much respect for himself and too much respect for what he's doing to really roll around with Catwoman. Even though, you know, and that's why it took so long for like the relationship to really like bud. Even though there was some sexual tension there, whatever it was. But I mean, they they just they haven't done Batman right. Bat Batman is my not well technically he's not my favorite character, but he's one of my favorite characters. I mean he he is just you you must kind of consider him one of the most perfectly created characters in literature when you read really great Batman comics. He's just so pure. Just like Superman is pure when he's written well. And what he stands for matters. Matters to me. Matters to people who who read the great Batman stories. And there are so many to read. Um, all right. He wants Batman to kill just to see what happens. God is irrelevant if he can't be in a no-win situation. Batman is irrelevant if he can't be in a no-win situation. Um, no. You're wrong. <laughs> Can Batman survive that is the question. Dude, that's one story is what I said here. Is it the only fucking story you can think to tell? It's the one story we keep not telling in the comics because it changes everything. It leads to a real need for the powers that be to muzzle the characters, um, to control them, and then they're just super cops. Yeah, that's the other thing. So if you don't have the police going after your vigilantes who are murdering people, well, then you have your government need, taking an interest in them and want it like, like because this is the sensical thing that happens when you have some unstoppable force going on killing people. You know, things can slide if there's just some guy who's like helping us, helping the police officers arrest people and like, you know, stopping people from getting mugged and raped. That's great. Everybody's with that. Start killing people, that's a different thing. You know, and really, as somebody who had an uncle who went to went to prison for crimes he didn't commit, um, you know, my uncle came out of prison. I remember I was a self-righteous, atheist, fucking 18-year-old, and he asked me about, like, the, the, the death penalty and, like, what I thought about it. And I remember saying to him something like, you know, eye for an eye, man, or, like, you know, you fucking kill somebody, like, you know, that's, that's, that's it. And he says, do you know how many people are wrongfully accused, wrongfully arrested every year. And I forgot, he like he spouted some statistics at me. And I was sort of blown away. And he said, if we get it wrong even once, that's too many. If we get it wrong even once, that's too many. Dude, he's 100% right. We can't get that wrong. We can't get wrong ending somebody's life. And these heroes, they can't get that wrong either. And even if you think, look, he saw him do it. He didn't get it wrong. He can't get it wrong. He's there physically acting. The idea that they could get it wrong, that's a possibility. That's a concern. Who are you to think that you're always going to get it right? Nobody is supposed to do I mean, This is biblical shit. Thou shalt not judge. You know, you're supposed to leave that shit up to God because he's got the higher perspective. Or she's got the, it's got the higher perspective, right? So you're not supposed to be sitting there, judge, jury, next to you. So that it, just, it changes the entire dynamic. Changes it for the reader. Changes the experience for everybody. When you have somebody always fucking figuring out a way to take the high road, even when it's hard, that... That's inspiring. And when, as a writer, you can constantly keep surprising them as to the new ways in which he manages to hold on to the high road 
do the right thing. Oh my God, that's just thank, thank you, thank you, writers, for being brilliant enough to put all these brilliant new ideas into my brain all the time. Things that I didn't see coming. And great writers do it all the time. Great writers in comics do it month in and month out, often multiple times a month in multiple books. Um, uh, everything. It leads to a real need for the powers that be. Okay. The idea of the comic book superhero is someone stepping up to do the right thing. There is self-defense and there is defense of others. And then there is murder for no good reason. Murder is revenge. How many great movies you see where the cop brings the guy in and doesn't kill him because it's the right thing to do? Isn't that, you know, there's like, nah, I'm better than this. Right? The cop says, I'm better than this. I'm better than him. Are these superheroes not better than these criminals? Do we not think that that's true? When did we forget about the idea of being better than scum? Like, seriously. It's like you're a scumbag for forgetting that. It's, it's really like, like there's just so many things that I like ways in which I want to describe you based on the way you've callously spoken about Batman and Superman's morality. Like it has no meaning. I feel like you need to be smacked in the face with goodness and what it means to people. Jesus. Have you, have you, have you seen the Iron Giant? The pivotal moments of Brad Bird's Iron Giant, the animated classic. Little boy Hogart teaching the Iron Giant, the, the alien weapon about Superman. About Superman always does the right thing. Truth, justice in the American way. Superman's going to save the day. And how does the movie end? The movie ends with Iron Giant sacrificing himself. As he says to himself to encourage his actions... Superman. He's going to be like Superman. He's going to do something for the greater good. That's that's Superman. When I watched that fucking Man of Steel movie and Superman broke Zod's neck at the end, I felt like that little boy. I felt like Hogarth in Iron Giant. I was like, say it ain't so, Superman. Say it ain't so. That's not who you are. You were my hero. You didn't have to do that. There's always a better way. You taught me that. You taught me there was always a better way. Now I have to be Superman. I don't fucking feel up to being Superman yet. I like the idea of you existing. So I could just keep aiming to be more like you. It's tragic. It's fucking tragic. Uh, what's he going to do? Lay down his gun? Scott uh, Zack Snyder says, how many different suggestions do you want me to make, you fucking idiot? He says, Batman's in this no-win situation. He's about to kill this girl. What's Batman going to do? Lay down his gun? Um, Well, that is one situation. Yeah, he could lay down his gun, and then when the guy goes to turn his freaking fire, uh, you know, fire on Batman instead, Batman dives at him because his his thing's mostly flame frame proof and hits hits him out the window or whatever. Yep, that's that's one option. Or Batman happened to have something in his cape, or Batman happened to have something in his 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 wallet, or Batman happens to have a non lethal option on his fucking belt. There is so many possibilities. It is stupid. Be creative, Zach. When you say something like this, you just portray yourself as, as fundamentally uncreative. Uh, what happens in, under these circumstances? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how anything stops that from happening. It's a no-win situation. You're a fucking fool. I it just... Ugh. You're not allowed to write this shit anymore. Please, stay away from it. You do not understand. Uh, I said, no, you're so wrong. It's not even funny. The people who want to test the characters have never read any of the books. I do not believe... It, they, and they, I mean, he's, he, he's read Dark Knight Returns. He's read Watchmen. I'm sure he's looked through some of these books. If he's read anything, he didn't read it with respect. He didn't read it with a, no, a knowing that people actually really value this stuff and think that it's worth getting right on the big screen. 
I do not believe this man has read anything more than Dark Knight Returns Watchmen. He should not be allowed near any DC properties. He only knows how to do one thing. And this Superman being boring only because they've made him like everybody else. And yet, Superman is fucking like everybody else. A real Superman would and does still mean something. Um, Let's see. Joe Rogan is criminally uneducated on comics. Well, at least mainstream comics. He was a horror comic guy. He talks about it then. He brings up a man bat that they should make one, that they should make a Batman, but he, like, he had bat powers. And Zach doesn't even say that man bat exists. And to me, that seems like a glaring omission of you don't fucking know Batman. Somebody's talking about how they should make like a mutant bat version of Batman, and you don't say, oh, there is a mutant version of Batman. He's called man bat. How do you not say that right there? If you know anything about Batman. Seems very weird to me. And seems weird to me still that he really wouldn't fucking know about Man Bat. You would imagine that he would probably know about Man Bat. But at the same time, how do you not say Man Bat while Joe's literally sitting in front of you? You know what would be cool? If they made like a like a Batman, but he's like really like a Batman. He had like superpower Batman. Like, yeah, that exists. Um... He's a billionaire whose parents were murdered, and he's a big dude. Oh, yeah. This was this was fucking Scott, uh, Zack Snyder's description of Batman. He's like, he's a billionaire whose parents were murdered, and he's like a big dude. If I was going to describe Batman, that's not what I'd say. I would say he represents the peak of human physicality, the peak of human mentality, strategy, and planning, governed by a cold, single-minded discipline that has come from tragic, uh, the tragedy of losing his parents at a young age and swearing an oath to himself that it would never happen again to anybody else. That's fucking Batman. And I can tell you that shit like that works. My father, the only reason why he is the famous uh, rock star that he is is because he, ha- he literally had a list of people. That he was going to show, fuck this guy and fuck this guy and fuck this guy and fuck this guy. And he used his trauma, he used his anger to propel himself to rock stardom, to drive himself to victory. That's what Batman has done. Has done. It's a real thing. People do it all the fucking time. So don't discount that it's a possibility that a man can snap in just a perfectly aligned way to single-mindedly do something to get the results he wants. I've seen it more than just my father and so many different books and so many different people that I know. It's ridiculous. Um, he said at the beginning of the show, if he could do Dark Knight Returns, he'd be done. Yeah, that's the only one that he's fucking interested in. Dark Knight Returns, and he doesn't even fucking get Dark Knight Returns. Dark Knight Returns, and the reason why there's so many elements of Dark Knight Returns in um, Batman vs. Superman, one is because it's like the only freaking scenario where that shit ever happened in the first place, and it doesn't make sense for it to happen in the past, in early times. Dark Knight Returns take place in a in a, basically a post-apocalyptic future where Superman has been sort of convinced by the government that like they're doing right, and he's become like a tool of the government, and Batman is still standing up as sort of an anarchist and he ends up at odds with Superman. It's awesome. And but Batman doesn't kill people in, in that freaking book. And it, it is great, but it's great because it's this dark future. And it's not mainstream superhero comics. It's not right now. Um, um, I guess I should talk about Dunderheads and being a jock and geek myself. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I'm a jock. I, I've done this. I, I've, I've worked with lots of people like Zach and Joe. I, I, I get their mentality. I get them. They, they're just they, they are not as deep. There, there's, in, there's interest that they have, but when it comes to like science fiction concepts and like exploring the mind in that way, they tend to just have a very practical approach to everything. And this practical approach, once they get older and they think that the world's a bitter place, then like it, it just fucking is reflected in all the shit that they do. Everything's bitter. Uh, I want to say 300 looks like the thing. You know, he earned our respect uh, with 300 by honoring the source material. And then, uh, and and he earned our respect with Watchmen and honoring the source material. But then he immediately changed Superman and Batman because he doesn't have any stories he respects from those characters in that way. You know, he he's he's this this other guy who who respects the deconstruction era of superheroes, but does not respect the foundational um, myths. You know, because these are our modern myths. 
um, and uh, you know things of how we should live by. I'm writing this. Um, you know, modern myths are showing us how we should live by, and your modern myths are showing us that we should live by murdering people. You know, Joe said it seems ridiculous. Batman wouldn't kill. Is it really that ridiculous, Joe? That somebody haunted by the death of his own parents wouldn't want to take away the parents or the son or whatever of anybody else would not want to be a participant in murder? I uh, said he admits what Kirk does. Quote, don't put him in a no-win situation. No, there is no no-win situation. Frank Miller demonstrated that a million times. There's always a better way. Batman always has a backup plan. Yes, Frank Miller did demonstrate it with Batman a million times. That Batman is that guy. Even in Batman Year One, as he learns to be that guy who will always find a better way, who doesn't believe in the no win situation, who will always outthink his opponent, who is always prepared for any scenario. That's Batman. That's the character. Okay? If you don't get that that's the character, like, like if you did get that that's the character, there wouldn't be this stupid Kobayashi Maru nonsense that you're thinking of. Like, I got to put him in a no swing. No, you idiot. You're fundamentally misunderstanding what you're making. Um, I yelled in my notes, have you seen the Iron Giant? Yes. <laughs> um, I believe you, backup plan, I believe you and kills him is not perfect, it's lazy. Yeah, the, the whole thing of, he, he tell, I, I keep going over this, but he talks about this line of where Batman's in the no-win situation and he's like, I've got, I'm going to kill her if you do it. And he's like, I believe you. And then he kills him and Joe's like, that's perfect. No, it's not perfect, man. It's lazy. A million other things that you could have did. Um, he said something about our perception of Batman changes. I said, yes, it does completely. He's a murderer now and not a myth who will always outthink his opponents. Now he's just like some fucking stupid human. He's just like somebody that you hear about in the news and he's not a mythological creature that he's meant to represent. <sighs> There's a reason why Superman is Superman. Yes, because he always finds a better way. Uh, mocking Superman, diluting the idea. The idea of Superman must be sacrosanct because it is so simple. They were mocking the idea of Superman I talked about, and, and, and it must, that's like, these are all the more reasons because Superman is this purity distillment of this simple idea of this Superman, this better man, a better man. Super, not just physically, mentally, morally super able to practice what he preaches, able to stand up for what he believes in, a Superman. It's just like Miss Piggy, where they forget Miss Piggy is not a pig and she's fat. Like She's a pig. She's pig-headed. She's selfish. She's spoiled. She's stupid in the way that she thinks. She just thinks about herself purely. Well, this guy's the opposite of being a pig. He's super. In all ways, he is super. Seriously, listening to non-comic book people talk about superheroes is so, it's just so easy to see why they execute these things the way they do. So shitty because they, they, they don't fucking know any better and just the, the, the idea doesn't even exist in their head that there could be like a Jesus figure with a cape. Why can't that be possible? And isn't a non-Jesus Jesus figure with a cape a better one? Because there's no inherent, well, if he doesn't save you, you're going to hell and all this other stupid ideas that get mixed in with that Jesus idea all the time. It's so unfortunate. Jesus would be such a more powerful idea if there wasn't this, well, if you don't find Jesus, you're going to hell. Like if that wasn't a part of it, oh my God, think of all the people who could be saved by Christ. And think of all the people who can be saved and have been saved by Superman. I was. I am. I was an asshole eye for an eye. I was an eye for two eyes guy. And it was Jesus and Superman and ideas like that that saved me from thinking like that. Brightened up the way I thought about how society might progress in the future. And we need every fucking character that represents this shit in order for it to not go away. They don't get it. Um, let's see, invest in transforming back. Oh, man, I'm already an hour and a half an hour into this thing, but I just, I want to fucking finish this conversation. All right. I'm going to try to try to get through this here. Cause I know I talked about a lot of this stuff. Invest in transforming Batman into something crazy instead of him representing the peak of human achievement. Um, what the fuck are you guys talking about? Um, they, they, it, it's really like just 
th- this Batman that they want to make, the idea that they think this Batman is better and more interesting is just ridiculous. Uh, I said he's not a playboy. He pretends to be. This is all so stupid. Zack Snyder does not know what he's talking about. It hurts a true Batman's fan heart. Joe, uh, now these superheroes are these flawed and depressed characters, not Superman, not Batman. Um, yeah, he, Joe was talking about how all these superheroes are all these flawed and depressed characters. Yes, all the more reason to hold the line with Superman and Batman and how they're meant to be represented. Um, they talk about doing a Watchmen 2, why there's no Watchmen 2. I says, there's no fucking Watchmen 2 because there's no book 2. And he says, he, Zach says that. Well, well, there is no book 2. But I mean, this this thing, I mean, they could do a Watchmen 2, and Watchmen 2, 2 could be cool as a movie. I don't necessarily think that, you know, you couldn't do that, and it's perfectly fucking reasonable to do it with Watchmen. Watchmen 2 would be great. I would love to see those characters continue in that world or whatever in something really cool based on a world that Zack Snyder believes in. He believes in that world. So, yes, do a sequel in that world. Stop making fucking Batman and Superman movies or thinking about any of this shit that you don't believe in and you don't understand. There's so many stories that have been made in comics to defend against this idea, the idea of the deconstruction that you see in Watchmen and Dark Knight Returns, and that and, and stories that demonstrate how much better it is to have these mythological depictions of these characters that are representative of a higher morality. I've talked about it a lot of times. You know, one of the great stories is also written by Joe Kelly, who had a great run on Superman. With it was four different titles coming out uh, during the month, and Jeff Loeb wrote one of them, and he wrote one of them, and then two other dudes whose names I'm going to forget right now. Um, but it was great. I was, I was some of my favorite comic reading. I love those books. He wrote a story called What's So Funny About Truth, Justice in the American Way, where Superman comes up against this team, the elite. And the elite are basically the authority. They're this evil Justice League. They're these people who are believing that they are the judge and the jury and executioner, and they can't just leave these fucking crazy people running around the street. And by the end of this fucking story, Superman, Superman freaking teaches them a lesson about being a good guy. It's great. And and it goes to a line because of, of where they are and how dark they are, but it, it's such a great story. And there are a lot of stories like it. I really like I, I need to make a list of all the stories that I've read that are like that. Because there's a lot of them. And they're great. We need more of that in the world. Um no much. There, there are so many stories. Joe has a bad art teacher. So did I. Wanted to be an artist. Crazy small pool of people who are actually reading these comic books. Uh, Joe's a, into creepy and eerie. Uh, great stuff. Adaptations, uh, however, of heavy metal. These stories can be deconstructionist, not Batman and Superman. Uh, yeah, so Zack Snyder was talking about how he loved heavy metal. This is all great stuff. I love heavy metal. I love uh, eerie and and uh, and, and uh, you know these creepy comics and stuff. This is, it's cool shit. That stuff can be deconstructionist. That stuff has free reign to do all sorts of things with the genre. You know, Zach's a, a genre filmmaker. But Batman and Superman should not be deconstructed in these ways. I mentioned Spidey, Daredevil, and the Punisher. And, and did I finish, you know, going, you know, the Punisher kills people. Daredevil beats the fuck out of them. Spidey doesn't do any of that. So now when Spidey, Daredevil, and the Punisher are in the same story together... Spider-Man and Daredevil are like yelling at the Punisher for killing people, but Spidey's still not feeling really happy about how Daredevil's doing things either. And the Punisher and Daredevil are like, Spidey, you're being too soft. This is comic books at their greatest. The Avengers is about all of these different characters from these different places and the different ways that they view the world and how those different ways that they view the world interact on the team. There's similar things going on with Batman and Superman. Batman and Superman in the Justice League. And Batman and Superman is a successful comic book because Batman and Superman are morally different enough for them to keep coming to odds with another, but at the same time learning from each other and growing and changing and shaping each other a little bit because of each other. But because each other are so different. When you have this world of Batman and Superman both killing, and it's, so then it's a killer Justice League. So what's the point of the Authority or the Elite or the Suicide Squad or any dark version of the Justice League? It's always presented completely different. It's so much wor- more worthwhile to have someone filling the space of being a moral safeguard. The other things in the DC universe have literally been created around the Justice League. You don't make another Justice League. You make the teen Justice League. You make the 20 somethings Justice League in The Outsiders. Or you make the killer Justice League. And then eventually they come up against the real Justice League. You make things that aren't exactly like the thing in the middle. And the things that are outside of the middle in DC Comics, which is the purity, the morality of the Justice League and the moral characters in the center, those are the morally murky guys outside of them. 
They play in the other arenas in various degrees of it. But that doesn't work. And everything just looks kind of brown the moment Batman and Superman are not moral linchpins. It's important to hold the line. You know, it's like, like, like you don't change the price. Like we're holding the line. In the comics, they say we're holding the line at one ninety nine, trying to keep the price up because they realize that there's like a real, people really have to start rethinking everything once the price changes so much that it's $3 a comic book now. Ah, well, instead of my six comic books a month, I'm going to read four comic books a month or whatever the hell it comes down to for you. Once you make that moral decision to make Superman and Batman kill, it is moving the line to such a significant price increase that everything has to be rethought. These things don't have to be rethought. They have already been laid out for you. The, the blueprints are there. Thinking that you have to rethink these things in any way, shape, or form just makes you an arrogant fool. And it, it, it's, it's been proven out in the results across the board with all these things. You know, Man of Steel and, and the director's cut of Batman versus Superman and the director's cut of Justice League, they're okay movies. But they are still not the majesty that is fucking Batman, Superman, and the Justice League in DC Comics at their best. The fucking Justice League movie does not hold a candle to any JLA stories written by Grant Morrison. Go read some of that. Homework assignment. Go read Grant Morrison's JLA. See what a real Justice League working together looks like. See what that feels like. Feel what the scope is in one of those books. And then come back to fucking Zack Snyder's Justice League and you just be like, this? Fuck this. Um, okay, a few last things I want to talk about here. Uh, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll save that for a second, actually. Um, um Broken heroes. Batman is not broken. He's fixed. He's focused his pain into progress. This is a real thing. My father has done this with music. Fuck that guy. I'm going to show him. Fuck this guy who killed my parents. I'm going to make sure this never happens again to anybody else. Uh, heavy metal aspects can be brought into other comics and stories without destroying the foundations. Heavy metal is a great reference. Uh, you know, there's so many things that you can learn from heavy metal, and they can be brought to Batman comics, and they can be brought to Superman comics, but not by fundamentally eroding the foundations of the, the comics, Grant Morrison has brought plenty of uh, of heavy metal to his Justice League. JLA, go read JLA. There's plenty of fucking heavy metal going on in that JLA. There's plenty of fucking heavy metal going on in Final Crisis by Grant Morrison, which is also really great and worth reading in tra paperbacks. Um, but you don't destroy the foundations. That's what we've done here. That's what Zach said. He's destroyed the foundations. Um, is Luke's bad conversation in the bar with the walrus guy sexual? This is something... In Star Wars, when he goes to the bar and he fights with a guy, he doesn't like you, I don't like you, and Luke's all intimidated, Zack says, is it sexual? So what the fuck is this guy talking about? Not everything is about sex. I love sex, but sex is sex, and there's not that much to learn from it inside stories, except for making them fucking yucky and weird. You make everything extra bizarre, and it takes the focus away from the personal morality which is, is supposed to be the fucking focus of these things. Saving the galaxy far, far away. Doing the right thing. Rising to the call. Being a hero. That's what people are fighting for. Shit. The Snyder Cut, I just want to say once and for all time, Zach definitely had a plan to play in the success of the, 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 the Snyder Cut even happening. And the campaign that was going on behind the scenes, he was helping and he was fueling. I am pretty certain that he was putting his own money into ads and these things to annoy the studio so that he could do this. I believe that he absolutely had a major hand in doing it. There are some articles that you could find online if you go out and and uh, and look into um, basically research that went into the bots and the accounts that were talking about Zack Snyder Cut and release the Snyder Cut and stuff like that. And there was definitely some shenanigans going on. And I don't put it past this guy because he's savvy enough to know what Hollywood is like and to freaking do what's necessary to get things done because he's he's somebody who works in Hollywood. Anybody who works in Hollywood is somebody who knows ultimately how to figure out how to get some things done. And he clearly is. 
So I say he cheated on that one, even though I'm glad it's out. I'm glad it was able to get out. It's ridiculous how Warner Brothers has screwed director after director after director and ruined their movies. I want the David Ayer Suicide Squad cut to come out. I hate all these auteurs making movies, and then Warner Brothers comes in with a whole bunch of stupid notes and ruins their movies. Happens all the time. All the fucking time. And I mean, the only time you finally see it is like a director's cut will be released because there's enough demand for it. And you go, studio. Do you not look like complete assholes? Look at the quality of this movie. Look at what you let them put out. This is insane. So, I mean, it's, it is ridiculous, but I think he fucking cheated to get that shit happen. Superman and Batman director's cut is a better movie, but contains some of the worst scenes. Yes, Superman and Batman cut is also a better director's cut, and but it, it also contains the single worst scene in the entire Snyderverse. It's the scene where... Clark Kent is hanging out with Lois Lane and she's in the bath and Superman hears somebody in trouble. Something is going on and he ignores it to spend more time in the bathtub with Lois Lane. Now for me, a better version of this story, Superman disappears for a blink of an eye and Superman is literally back before his girlfriend has looked up from the bubbles in the bathtub. She doesn't know he left, but he does. That's better. That's Superman. Superman always does the right fucking thing. Superman doesn't sit in the fucking bathtub when he knows something bad's happening to somebody outside and he could do something about it just so he can mess around with Lois Lane a little longer. And Lois Lane is not so fucking shallow that she would be insulted that Superman left real quick to stop the pain and suffering of somebody in the world because Lois Lane is a hero. Lois Lane loves Superman. She admires Superman. She admires what he stands for. She stands for the same things. Fuck. Fuck. All of the movies that he made, all of his superhero movies that he made, they are all superficially sound films. And the ones like Watchmen and 300, where they are in alignment with his own personal mantra, they are great. I think 300 is one of the best superhero movies ever made, one of the best adaptations ever made. It is damn well done. Watchmen, the director's cut too, damn well done. You know, talk about honoring the fucking source material and having something really like, you know, it's they're great. They're great. They're achievements. But his Batman, Superman, his Superman, Man of Steel, his Justice League, they are superficially sound films, but they do not scratch the itch of a comic book reader like myself. And if they scratch your itch because you've never read any comics, all I can say is that it's sad for you. It sucks for you. One day, maybe you'll get to see what I see. Maybe you'll get to experience what I've experienced. It's incredible. It's a tragedy that we are being kept from the greatness of these stories told correctly. Last thing I want to talk about to wrap up this whole thing is, um, I forget what it's called, but there was a rule on in Star Trek that because this was a positive vision of the future, that the conflict should not be coming from between crew members. That these people should have morally gotten their heads out of their ass enough to figure things out. You know? And the conflict should come from without, not from within. There's something similar to be learned for how a Superman or a Batman needs to be treated. There is something fundamental about their nature that makes them good. The evil has to come from elsewhere. They are holding on to the seat of their pants. They are trying to make this world a better place. They are trying to inject some good into it, some light into it. The more you darken them and make them murdering people, it, it just, you lose. You lose what we are here for. You lose the cowboy that the audience came to see. You lose the hero that your audience came to see. I just can't, I can't take it. It's a tragedy. I'm so sorry for all of you who have not been given the medicine that we all deserve in Superman, in Batman, in these other characters on the big screen because of shallow, negative, dark fucking thinking like Zach has, like Zach put on display in his freaking interview with Joe Rogan. And I mean, like I, like, I don't have any problem with Zach. I really respect him as an artist. I think he's a great director. I think he's awesome. But when he comes into my world, starts shitting on it, 
and starts talking as if he fucking knows better. What an arrogant asshole you are making yourself look like to people like me who actually understand this shit. And I mean, it's just been, since he, I, I've, I've been bubbling with rage. <laughs> I've been bubbling with rage about it and I needed to come on here and talk about it. Anyway, that's all I got for today, Coolest Geeks. I am your passionate geek culture commentator, Jesse Blaze Snyder. You can write to me at jessieblazejessesnyder.com. I love you all so much, and I look forward to hearing from you. I really do. Uh, anyway, thank you for listening to my show, and I hope you will join me again next Wednesday and this coming Saturday for another fucking ass-kicking episode of The Coolest Geek Alive. Later. You've been listening to Coolest Geek Alive with me, your host, Jesse Blaze Snyder. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more excellent geek culture content. Thanks for listening. It's my favorite part! Isn't that heavy? I played that. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Cool is the life. Be fucking awesome. Stay with your tribe. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Revenge of the geeks. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Week after weeks. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Laughing with you. It's gonna be fucking awesome. And crying sometimes too. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Spilling it out. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Making you shout. Awesome. Talking some shit. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Living your shit. My voice is gonna be so fucking awesome. Food in our mouth. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Get in the mouth. It's gonna be Listen fucking to the awesome. Reason. Tell all your friends. It's gonna be fucking awesome. Crawl right on tears. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be fucking awesome. awesome. Reason to buy. Fucking awesome! Fucking awesome! It's gonna be fucking awesome! Just wait! You'll see! You'll all see! You'll all see! <laughs> the Podcast Playground! All right.